Welcome back. Yes, to watching the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. A former Deputy Senate President Ike Ekwerimadu alongside his wife Beatrice Mwaneka Ekwerimadu have been denied bail and remanded in custody by United Kingdom Court of allegations bordering on organ trafficking. It was earlier reported that the UK Metropolitan Police and London Metropolitan Police in particular uh, formally charged Ekwerimadu and his wife with conspiracy to facilitate the travel of another person for organ harvesting in the United Kingdom. Ekwerimadu and his wife were arrested and charged over their plan uh, to bring a child into the United Kingdom to allegedly harvest the said child's organ. The charges involve arranging and facilitating and or facilitating the travel of another person with a view to exploitation, namely organ harvesting, according to a um, Metropolitan Police statement released yesterday, Thursday. Uh, the victim whose travel was facilitated to the UK uh, by the suspects was said to be a homeless 15-year-old boy uh, picked from the streets of Lagos under false pretense. The statement added that the investigation was launched after detectives were alerted to potential offences under the modern slavery legislation uh, in May 2022. Now, the British Broadcasting Corporation reported that when the suspects appeared at the Oxbridge Magistrates Court in West London on Thursday and were asked by the clerk uh, for their address, uh, they both replied Nigeria. Uh, the Aquarius who were arrested two days ago have uh, since then been remanded in custody to appear at the same court next month, uh, specifically on the 7th of July. The suspects were arrested at Heathrow Airport on their way to Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, reports claim they were planning to procure a kidney from a donor in Turkey after the initial plan had failed. Now, um, we have joining us a lawyer, Justice Uhuwebu, who uh, will provide some much needed analysis on this developing story. Uh, Mr. Uhuwebu, thanks for your time. Thank you. Good morning. How how does um, uh, someone who is a uh, uh, you know a ranking senator has been in the National Assembly for uh, years you know uh, spanning almost two decades if not more uh, someone who was called to the bar Nigerian bar in 1987 someone who um, has a degree and a master's degree in law someone who has a PhD in law um, how does someone like that who has his own law chambers where his principal in the law chambers named after him uh, uh, commit such uh, an error, a blunder, or an alleged crime? Barrister, can you hear me, please? All right, we have lost our guest, Justice Uhuibu, uh, who's a lawyer, but uh, we'll get back to, to him as soon as he... Uh, we can. I'm um, sure so you can understand the network sometimes, no always a friend. Uh, but I was seeking to understand from the learned uh, uh, gentleman, like they call themselves, um, how someone who was called to the Nigerian bar in 1987, someone who has a law degree, who has a master's in law, who has a PhD in law, who has a, uh, who is a principal uh, at a chamber, a legal chamber or a law chamber named after him, and who has been in the National Assembly, a ranking senator, and who is also a former um, deputy senate president, find himself in such a situation? Because, of course, you don't see fire in walking to it. You don't also um, expect that somebody who is aware of the legal provisions in, in, in Nigeria and different parts of the world, at least globally recognized the conventions and all that, will find themselves in this kind of situation. So that is what I was seeking to understand. But Mercy, it's quite a... Um, uh, uh, a shock to many that uh, someone so eminently qualified and respected with such a standing in society uh, will find himself in this situation, not saying that he is guilty or has committed a crime, but finds himself. That's why I'm using because, that, uh, that particular uh, description. Because uh, first of all, the trial is not a conviction, and we're hoping that um, the trial, when the trial starts, uh, all the facts would actually be brought together, and if he's found guilty, then he would be made to face the law. Uh, a lot of persons have expressed the fact that uh, the reason they're very hopeful, this is not the Nigerian system, they have uh, expressed a lot of faith in the British judicial system, and then there's hope. So if he's guilty, he will face the law. If he's not guilty, it would be all right. But um, some of the concerns that you have raised is, I mean, he's very learned, he's very exposed, he should understand, he should know better. It's that we, we, we sometimes do not understand the workings of the law. 
And then there are some things that are very applicable. Uh, you know, there might be universal standards for some basic issues. But you know, in a system where you have uh, things not done properly, uh, we seem to have a very big issue with, you know, respecting the law, the constitution, you know, even at the party level, it's just a big deal. As simple and as easy as respecting the traffic law, it's a big deal. And so you probably would just, you have the same behavior and uh, character. And then moving over to another climb where things, where you have a system that's very functional and very efficient. And then you think that that might just be the case. And, you know, uh, you, you, know you, you might be taking, <laughs> so, so the things that you probably think that are, don't mean anything to you, uh, because there are some things that are very basic. Mm -hmm. Now, humans, uh, if, if you look at the laws in the United Kingdom, first of all, you're going to, be, what he's going to be facing, we're looking at the Modern Acts of 2015, Modern Slavery Acts of 2015. And if he faults all of that, then it becomes, you know, an issue at the end of the day. So what, 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 what we're being told, I'm not sure if we have yeah, a guest so, now. So we're, try, we're still trying to get back to our guests. But, um, uh, you know, there's, there's a normal, you know, there's, a, there's a, usually a haste for, for Nigerians to, to, to take sides in such matters. Uh, in which politicians are involved, you know, because of course, for obvious reasons, people are not happy. So looking at the, the mood of the nation and the comments by, you know, uh, uh, most Nigerians in the media, you know, radio stations, TV stations, uh, you have uh, social media, uh, most people have already, um, you know, passed the judgment on Ike Kurimaru. You know, some are saying karma is at work, you know, uh, that politicians have not fixed the health sector in the country, and uh, this is as good as happening to him. The next time, he should, he should fix the health sector. But, you know, I mean, I think it's, it's too early to, to, to jump to conclusions. Uh, we've had, you know, a bit of from the Daily Mail. Daily Mail of the UK have put out uh, an article where they gave us the, the words, the, the statement by the lawyer to Ekwe Madu, and then also the lawyer to his wife, Neka Ekwe Madu, she, uh, who the lady representing her, put a word out as well, saying that they do not, have never, and uh, will never um, uh, be part of human trafficking. You know, they've never been part of that, and you know, they've never brought anyone to the UK for organ harvesting. That took some. That took some time to try and understand why the use of the word organ harvesting, because of course, in in um, in, dif in different parts of the world, including the UK you're able to, to donate an organ to someone who is in need. In fact, recently in the UK, they had to um, uh, uh, come up with new laws, all right, with new laws. They have what they call the opt-out option in the UK, which simply means that because of the new laws that state that if you're 18 and above, when you die, your organs could be donated to somebody who is alive, who is in need. You know, so for instance, your liver, for instance, your kidney, for instance, your heart, um, if you die, your organs by the laws of the United Kingdom can be given to someone who is alive. Now, the opt-out law, or the opt-out option, rather, says that um, you don't need to sit back and allow your family members to decide what should be done with your organs. Maybe when they're approached by the government, if they want to say no, or if they want to say yes, you know, uh, approached by the health authorities, you should actually take your decision. You can go on the NHS website, uh, and you can actually click whether you want your organs to be donated when you die uh, or not, you know, so it's called the opt-out uh, option. So, so, I mean, for people to really understand why someone has to be taken from Nigeria to the UK to donate their kidney, of course, um, the National Health Service is a, a sort of a welfareist um, health program set up by the United Kingdom, the government, for the people there. Uh, you don't need to pay for health. It's, it's, um, uh, uh, what do you call it again? Um, a welfare scheme. Um, there's a particular term I'm, I'm trying to look for. I think I'll call it um, a social security of sorts. You know, uh, the latest figures, if you check out what the National Health Service is saying, uh, indicates that, I mean, last, last year the BBC put out a report that they had about 7,000 people who were on the waiting list. It's a big issue when you talk about the waiting list, waiting list. You hear them talking, you listen to their radio stations and stuff, you hear them talking about waiting list. People who have, uh, you know, chronic diseases who are waiting for uh, a transplant may have to, may even pass on and not get one. Um, as of today, um, in the United Kingdom, you have uh, uh, more than uh, uh, 6,000 people who are on the waiting list as at today. All right, you have more than 6,000 people who are on the waiting list who cannot, and it takes typically sometimes three years. 
three, three, Tell us about, about I, I think, Kofi. sorry, Messi, the I, average time it takes is three and a half years. Uh, but what they're saying is that it could be more or it could be less. So, so what we have now, if you permit me to just make that point, is you have, as we speak today, you have 6,414 people who are on the waiting list for a transplant in the UK between April 2022 and June uh, 17, 2022. You have 834 people who received the transplant. So it shows how it is, it is a dire situation to the point the government had to change the rules to say if you die, uh, your organs can be donated to someone. But you have to take the choice now if you want to opt in or out. Yeah. No, so, so, so I think that uh, as much as we're also saying that it's important, we know that Nigerians have been very reactive with this issue. Already what you want to say is that, you know, the case already is in public court, and so the problem might just be, you know, public trial and media trial. But we're saying, hey, let's not be very hesitant in jumping into conclusion. The facts would be there. Uh, in different countries, you have laws that, have, that varies, and so that's the issue right now. What's obtainable in a certain country might not be obtainable in another country. But also bringing it to something things that are very basic. We're talking about universal standards and principle now. When you talk about the issue of human being and child trafficking, it's a, a universal thing at the end of the day. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, when eventually the trial starts, of course, the spin and adjointment and uh, everything has been denied bail uh, July the 7th. Uh, there will be hearing for that particular case. It would be the, they'll be looking at the, this legal practitioners, they'll be looking at the issue of intention here. What's the intention? You know, what are the procedures? These are, yes, we understand that these are dynamics, but like you mentioned, it's very fundamental that you understand what's applicable in another country. There's always this parable that they say that if you have like a, uh, a hen or fowl gets to a place, you have to take a step first and observe what's going on before you begin to take okay. some kind of action. So it's important that people understand that laws vary in different countries, but there are some basic laws that are very universal. You need to understand that before you understand. So um, if you also look at the letter that's been made very public, the letter that was put out uh, asking for application of visa, because um, there's also another thing that's very critical in all of this, and we're hoping that we get the answer, is the fact that, number one, uh, the plea there is saying that uh, you have the age age 15 the boy is is, is 15 years old and on the other hand um, there's also a report from this other side saying he's 21 these are issues that are very very um, uh, contending they're issues that needs a lot of answers so how how did you know the police in the United Kingdom arrive at 15 and he's saying he's 21 mm. now looking at that letter as well you would also see a letter. The letter talks about investigating. Investigating, there's going to be some investigation of a donor. I mean, investigate, you know, kidney donor uh, or an organ, something like that. I can't go through. Okay, let's see if I can just go through the letter now. Uh, not necessarily yes. this the way is, This is. is where A.K. Kuebado, you know, got so, 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 yeah. so I have the letter in front of me. It says, I'm writing to, in support. Uh, it has the Senator E.K. Kuebado uh, letter headed pepper. And of course, his name and all of the things that you want to see is dated 28 of, uh, 28, am I seeing clearly? 28 of December, December 2021. And he says, I'm writing in support of visa application made by Mr. Upo uh, David, who is currently having medical investigation for kidney donation to Miss Sonia Ekoromadu. I say with that first, investigation. Now, that, I think that that's the reason why you have a lot of Nigerians saying, hey, if we fix it, do, do you even have to, you know, go, um, be, because at the end of the day, according to the reports and story that we have available, is that the, the kidney didn't match. There wasn't really a match, and that's why he was on transit, you know, to get another donor. But the big question would be, it, it gets back to the number one question that you've asked, is that should you need to travel to carry out this investigation? Don't we have what it takes in Nigeria to find out if, you know, the kidney actually match? So you needed to you know, make that journey first outside of Nigeria to go find that. So if he did that within Nigeria, maybe all of this will probably wouldn't have been, you yeah. know, in this particular space and all of yes. that. Yes, but, but, but uh, that, that's an important question. Before we, we move on to some other aspect of this, it's, it's, it's uh, good that this letter um, it was leaked. I, I, I would be interested in knowing who leaked this letter out. Uh, but it was leaked to the uh, to the public, and it's in the public space. You can see that, uh, indeed, Senator... Uh, A.K. Kremado wrote to the UK visa authorities asking for a visa for Mr. Ukpo Nwamini David, who is currently having medical investigations for a kidney donation to Ms. Sonia Kremado, who is Kremado's daughter. 
David and Sonia will be at the Royal Hospital of London and I will be providing the necessary funding. Um, you know, so it, it was clear the man didn't hide anything. He was clear. But the reason, uh, so the question is coming up. And you know, one could ask why did Ekwemado have to state all these things in a letter? Um, you know, so the reason why he has to, I'm not a medical doctor, but if we had one, I'm sure they would say that sometimes you have to have the, the recipient of the, the, the organ together with the, um, uh, the, the, the It talks the, about the, the investigation. The donor. You, you see yeah, the I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Hmm. Uh, together with the donor, um, so they can test to see if it's a match. Now, you can see that he said there was an investigation going on in Nigeria to determine the suitability. Where is that? To determine the match. Um, it's on the, it's on the, page, on the page there. All right? What part so, of so it? So th those, those medical, that medical investigation uh, is what he was talking about. Currently uh, having a medical investigation. Now, of course, um, it may be, it could be suspected that Sonia was already in the UK receiving her uh, medical attention. Uh, the query matters have a house as it was uh, had before the court in Oxbridge, the magistrate's court in Oxbridge, in somewhere in North London, a place called Middlesom, I think is the name. Um, so they have a house there. Uh, so so, so it, it, it may be, we don't know a lot about this, but it's possible that Sonia uh, was, was um, receiving medical attention in the UK. Um, I mean, it's not far-fetched and it's easy to understand that you may want to have the person who is donating the organ somewhere near the person who is um, receiving the organ. I would be surprised if they, they weren't sure that this guy was a match, because those medical investigations going on in Nigeria should help. But, but, but the reason why Equipment had to state all things, is all these, is that there is, um, there is a, a visa. Um, it, you know, uh, it, the information is readily available on the UK government website. There's a visa called the UK uh, Standard Vista Visa uh, that can be used to go to the United Kingdom for uh, business purposes, you want to visit on business, you want to visit uh, for study, you want to visit as an academic, uh, and also when you want to visit for medical reasons. Now, one of the, the things that you can visit the UK as a standard visa, uh, on, as a standard visitor for medical reasons, will be uh, to donate an organ. All right, they have three reasons there. Number one is to have a private, private medical treatment at a hospital or other medical facility, which is what our president does. Number two is uh, to have, uh, what I think he does anyway. Number two is to have a treatment at an NHS hospital. And the third one is to donate an organ to a family member or a close friend. Now, this includes uh, being assessed for suitability as a donor match. So you can actually travel, get a visa, apply for a visa, not just to go and donate, but also to travel to go there to see if both of you match. You will be given a visa for that. You'll be given a visa for that. But they have strict rules. What they say is that you must, you must, you must be a member of a recipient's family. All right. They say you can only visit the UK uh, to donate organs to a a family member who you're genetically related to, for example, your sibling or your parent. B uh, someone who you have close personal relationship with, for instance, your partner or your friend. All right, so these things exist because a lot of people have ask, been asking uh, why didn't they get the, 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 the donation from UK. They have a shortage up there. And then secondly, you have this visa which is available. So the man had to probably state that on the letter so that they could understand the kind of visa, visa they're applying for. I'm told we have our guests back on the line. Uh, uh, Justice Uwebo is a lawyer. Good morning to you, Justice, uh, and great to have you back. Hello, Justice Uwebo, can you hear me, please? All right, all right, all right. Sincere apologies for that. We'll try and reconnect with him. So there's this possibility, Mercy, to have this, um, apply for this visa. Uh, uh, so I'm sure that's why he had to. And it's clearly stated on the UK government website that you can, you can get that visa, um, not just to go donate an organ, but to go test for suitability, you understand? So it's not, it's not, it's not a surprise that he had to taste, uh, state that. But also, there are criteria. The person must be uh, someone who you've had a close personal, personal relationship with, or, you know, or a family member, genetically. You know, I mean, that can, can be stated. We know what happens. But why are they, why are they here? Just to, to make another point, uh, sorry, Mercy. Uh, wh why, are they in, why are they looking out for things like this? Um, the, the United Kingdom, the people in the government, they are really big uh, on, on 
forced organ uh, extractions. Because of the shortage in the UK, a lot of British citizens, some of them, let me say, have to travel to China and other countries to get organ transplants. Now, the United Kingdom has been, um, uh, uh, has been uh, very, very, very concerned that um, you have what we call forced organ harvesting. Because, I mean, we have to look at also the difference between organ harvesting and organ donation. All right. So if it's forcefully taken from you, you know, then, of course, it's no, no longer a donation. Nobody can say that uh, you donated something that you didn't eat, you know, readily, easily, or willingly give. You know. So they now came up to say, OK, forced organ harvesting is something we don't want in our country. We have information from people in China that some of them who are prisoners of conscience have their organs forcefully taken from them uh, to be given to people who need them. And that our, our citizens are traveling from UK because of the long waiting list and the expense that you'd have to you know, incur if you're going for private care, that some citizens are going to China to get transplants. Now, we don't want our citizens to go to China to get organ transplants. Uh, if it's possible that those organs were forcefully taken from people without their, uh, their consent. consent. Yes, yes, their consent. So you have forced organ harvesting. As, as a matter of fact, uh, a couple of years ago, not less than 40 MPs in the British Parliament had to you know, support a bill to the effect that uh, such uh, uh, what they call organ tourism should be, uh, should be banned. And this year, uh, a bill was passed into law, the UK's health and care bill, was passed into law, a new piece of legislation that uh, was said to prevent or will prevent, expect to prevent British nationals from traveling abroad to receive an organ transplant. They want to make sure that whoever receives a transplant abroad got it for some, from someone who willingly gave it. It's like, for instance, having a, a, a T-shirt company, maybe a UK uh, business that manufactures T-shirts in Taiwan or Bangladesh or Vietnam. And then they get to hear that they're using child labor. You know, they don't want you know their business to be so, associated so, so, with that. I mean, yes. that, that, that's why that's why that's why I'm saying that um, the a lot of faith has been expressed in the judicial system of uh, you know the United Kingdom, and everyone is expected that it's going to be it's a fair system. There's a lot of trust that's been expressed, as much as a lot of persons are already jumping into conclusion and you know trying to. Um, go ahead with giving ruling and judgment just before the trial. It's already, um, you know, you, you have a case already. But the point here is this. Uh, a lot of persons have queried. And the issue is, if we had, you know, a system where we're able to sort out what we have, uh, we're able to, if you look at the letter that's been made public, uh, that letter that he wrote to the uh, British Embassy, or Commission, if you want to say, uh, talking about investigating. There's nothing wrong. I, mean, I, I don't think that anybody will be talking about the uh, issue of having... Yes, mercy. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you. I'm told we have our guest uh, back on the line. Justice Ahoyegbu, uh, can you hear us? Hello, Justice Ahoyegbu, are you there, please? Can you hear us? Uh, fortunately, we can't. we've lost uh, contact with our guest. So, Mercy, this is quite an interesting one, and uh, uh, fortunately, I guess, is uh, having some, some issues uh, with his connection, uh, but we'll try our very best to see if we can, we can do that. Um, so, so, so the, yeah. the question has been about, um, you know, investigating. So it's, it was very obvious that the, the process, and which will, a lot of persons have said, legal practitioners, uh, you want to have people saying that, the intention would also be looked at. These are factors that will be considered during the hearing. Yes, but we yes. don't want to be very jumpy about it. The issue is the intentions of the parties will be looked at. That's number one. And secondly, you would also be looking at the issue of um, you know, the procedure. These are very critical issues. The laws actually varies and fingers are crossed. And we're hoping that justice would actually be met at whichever way. Now, on the other hand, it's the fact that people, Nigerians are already saying, hey, if we had a medical system, uh, you know, sorted out, if we had faith in the medical, uh, you know, structure that we have or institution, then we would not even have any reason to always want to go out. That's because it was very certain with that letter that um, 
He wasn't sure. It wasn't going to be a donor. It wasn't just going to be like, hey, we're just going to have a kidney donation. This person is going to be having a kidney donation. It was an investigation to ensure that there's a match. Unfortunately, according to the reports, um, you know, it feels like the donor wasn't really a match. But a lot of it, it's, it's a concern. I mean, that's what happens when you have a system that functions, that develop climb. You know, you have structures, you have laws, and things are not done as you should think. But we're hoping that uh, the facts will be actually brought out. Fingers are very crossed. And let's see how all of this pans out. Yes, We're also yeah. asking everyone, yeah. you know, to relax and allow, you know, these professionals, I mean, the, the law itself, the judicial system, to do its job without we jumping into conclusions because uh, the facts would actually be brought out. And let's not be very hasty uh, with uh, public judgment on this particular case. M M Mercy, we need to, uh, the um, point I was trying to make, um, very important before we go, uh, is that... You know, all these things that we're saying is to help people understand what's going on and why, you know, this is wrong. Uh, also, the questions on the minds of, of members of the public out there. Um, but the point I was trying to make was that the, the, it is wrong to take uh, an organ from somebody who um, does not voluntarily give it. Um, there are statistics showing that it's a growing business and trade in the world. We've had people who have... Um, reported in Nigeria that uh, they were almost abducted. I think last month there was a story from a lady in Port Harcourt who said she had uh, this one chance experience, what we call one chance in Nigeria, where she was almost kidnapped in a bus. You know, they, they would tell you, oh, there's only one seat left. That's what they call one chance, you know, on, on the streets in, in this part of the world. And you get into the bus and then uh, you're abducted. She managed to escape, but she said they pointed a gun at her, uh, opened the cooler and showed her body parts. You know, and said if she moves, they'll shoot her, is what she said. So we've had we've had response, um, you know, experiences like this. It was in 2017. Former Nigerian Aviation Minister Femi Fanikaidi uh, said, you know, in, in the height of this whole uh, slavery thing in Libya of blacks, uh, he said that most of them uh, have are killed and they have their organs uh, exported to countries like China. Um, so so it, it, it's it's interesting to see um, if the UK authorities are really really concerned about. Uh, the morality of their citizens paying their way to places like China, spending their own money to take care of themselves and get transplants. They don't need to be the ones who, who extracted these organs uh, illegally, but it, it, they just do not want there to be any complicity of any nature. So if you look at that, now imagine having someone trafficked, allegedly, from Nigeria to the United Kingdom, which means that they were taken there under uh, false pretenses or against their will or without their consent or that their parents allegedly, suspect, suspectedly. And then secondly, apart from trafficking, um, uh, suspected intention or intent to harvest organs. That's the second one. This happening on the assault, they are going to frown at it very, very seriously. This is a serious case and um, nobody can can talk them out of this. Definitely, it's not going to happen. So, but but um, we, we need to be aware of, of what's happening in the world. Also, the fact that even if um, you know we have the health system working in Nigeria, it still wouldn't make it right uh, to, to, to harvest people's organs. You no, know, so, it still so that, make that, it right. that's not even the case. I mean, we're just looking at the issues now. Like you've rightly mentioned, that's not the point. We're not saying that uh, we're very in the know that a lot of... Uh, you know, organ, organ harvesting is going on in the world. I mean, I'm sure that you're very also conversant with the trend of uh, in Zimbabwe where people are taking out their toes and, and selling it off. So all of these things are in the know. We're just saying that if you look at the reactions of Nigerians, you have mentioned the Nigerians have been very critical and saying, oh, if we have the, you know, medical sector, which is very key. I mean, let's even look at it. How many times have we heard that the president of the United Kingdom came to Nigeria for some medical treatment? How many times have you heard that members of the parliament uh, here in Nigeria or here anybody coming to Nigeria to, to seek medical treatment? If you look at the letter, the point is, could we or could he have avoided the situation? If you say you're going to have a kidney transplant, he wasn't very sure. It was going to be an investigation. That's what the letter says. And we're just being very careful so we don't jump into the case. I mean, we're not lawyers. Uh, we have the judicial system already. They will actually follow due process. And the reason why bail was not granted was because it involves different countries. And so this would actually allow you know, for the entire process. And this is what a lot of people are saying. A system that actually works. A system that respects procedures and you know, respects the law and things that are applicable. And that's what exactly what it is. Uh, you know, the issue that is very universal 
universal and basic, is that lives will be protected. Humanity is number one. And when you also look at the issue of the age, the, you, so you have on the one hand, because following the news and the reports, you have the United Kingdom media reporting, 15 years old. And on the other hand, you're hearing is a 21 year old. Whose report do we then believe? Let's not understand that at 15, you're still looking at this child as a minor. They don't have any right to give consent to whatever it is. And so should they have someone who would actually give all of that? But this is not actually our duty. Uh, that's how much we can take at yeah, this but, point but, in time. Uh, Merci, Merci before, bef bef time before, before you, you go, I think it's a very important point you've raised. And since we're here to enlighten people, just give me a, a second or two to say this, that um, uh, it's a question that a lot of people have asked, uh, you know, about the age and everything. Now, uh, look at the provisions. I mean, the NHS website is very rich, and uh, anyone can go there and check it out. They asked, uh, uh, we have explainers for everything. So the question is asked, you know, as far as um, uh, live organ donation is concerned. We have two, live organ donation and donation from people who have passed on. Uh, they're asking, is there an age limit to becoming a donor? So the age, issue of the age really doesn't come to play in terms of whether the age is a factor in determining guilt or not, but really the, the consent, like you said. Um, now, there's no age limit, according to NHS, to be an organ donor. The decision about whether some or all organs uh, or tissue are suitable for transplant is always made by medical specialists. Um, but children can, can donate, but there has to be, uh, number one, consent, uh, also, they may need to go to the court to get approval, you know. So uh, we'll get more details, like you said, as time goes on. Uh, but, but we have to move on. We'll be back after this break to talk some more right here on the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Stay with us.